<coughs> greetings and Sabbath greetings. Give me a moment to get a bit more sorted. See, it's a, a rainy day in Wuhan. And a day I find myself challenged, struggling. So what better thing to do than to remove my hat as a male, as a man, and praise and pray to a God who can and does provide in ways that we do not see and do not know. Heavenly Father, I look to you and hope in you and trust in you. I profess you as Lord and Saviour of my life and my days and ways, Lord, even though some of those things are going to come under uh, discussion in today's message. May it also be a message for your church. May it be your message. May it point people to your truth, your great goodness, your glorious name, and the name of your Son, Jesus, Yeshua, who is the Messiah. Amen. So, I've, uh, part of that provision that I've been giving thanks for is that I prayed for a place where I could set the umbrella in a tree over my head and an umbrella for the camera over a tree over it, which is done and should keep us. There's been some torrential downpour today, or down by the lake nearest to my home at a point where I've taken one of my most uh, what I consider my most Chinese of views in the I understanding of country, of China, its culture, its history before coming here this would be a place that I would in the main part picture in my mind lake countries and then a, a, a peninsula leading out into the lake with a stand of narrow straight growing trees willows the type uh, as I came down this morning a heron took flight low bushes and reeds in the water lily pads peaceful and that in my mind along with the cherry blossoms would be something that I'd envision Perhaps not the, uh, I guess to the, on the far side of the lake, the trees there, the things, but the soaring dew build tower blocks, no. And yet here we are, and I give thanks to God in every place and space, and part of the world I've been in, there's no place, I mean, the, 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 I think it's Psalm 139 says, there's, where can we flee from your spirit? Where can we run from God? Because even if we, go to the ends of the earth, we go to the islands and the spaces and the places and the deserts and the high places and the low places, the valleys and the sea sides and the middle of the oceans, there still God is. He who made it and created it is in it and through it and I think it goes, the psalm goes on to say that even if we go down to the very gates of hell and make our bed there, when we wake in the morning there God will be. Uh, the majesty of our King, the majesty of the one true living God, the maker and creator who is far and above everything we can know and conceive. We're, we're people, we're made, we're created beings, we're his creation and we are fearfully and wonderfully made and yet in the order of things we can see we are little different from the worms that burrow in the ground at our feet when compared to the powers and potentates and dominions that exist in the realms above this in the heavenlies you're giving up on me are you 
No. Your estate. I ask and beg your favour. That might be a thing, it might need a longer adjustment. If a breeze comes or the rain weight increases on it. Hey, tell him, yeah. Our position, yeah, but for the grace of God go I is a phrase that's often used in English and, and, and it's true in that, you know, we can be undone in moments. Everything, our being, eaten by creatures, undone by flaming balls or rocks or stone, earthquake, catastrophe, falling trees, limbs, random things, whatever. And as we go, as we live, we, 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 we're fulfilling that, that life that, that God has set in motion. that he's given, that he's breathed, as he's knit us together in our mother's womb, that same Psalm 139. God has been present, uh, I've preached, I believe that he's, that's the only thing present when we're in our mother's womb, we knit together, the spirit of the living God is there overseeing it with care, the coming together, the knitting together of our being, of our fibre, of our very essence, our soul being committed into the place and why something like abortion is such an abomination because in the presence of God that very life is cut and cut off in such a brutal way Aye. Yeah, there's no guarantees and certainties in our life we're not you know promised a path that is easy or promised a path that is fair God has set us in motion and that life is entrusted into the world and entrusted away from him although he watches over us or those angels watch over us because it was his desire to have autonomy, a, 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 a being that was created yet that was also separate from him, that his desire is that that being would be able to look in its autonomy upon creation and say, that is creation, it's wonderful, it's beautiful, it's splendid. You did that. Well done, awesome, brilliant. Not out of vanity, or precociousness it, it was his will to share to have something not of himself in creation with the capacity to say it is good as God himself says in Genesis as each of the days each of the stages pass separation from light from the dark the uh, waters above from the waters below the land from the sea that, 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 that those each of those transformational stages this is good and then as he moves in his own creation is in that process in that wrestling in that in that bringing about an inevitability and, and, and a, deci a decision to bring forward that autonomous being to, to have him walk in the garden to see it's not good for him to be alone to create a woman and of man so those two things could cohabit and be together in, in a relationship that reflected that relationship with God and the man and the beauty of that totality, what was complete in its rightness <clears throat> oh, 
a marvel to behold, a marvel to comprehend in a world that was not cursed, that didn't strive or seek to undo us, to be, you know, contest with in order to bring forth a crop from the ground. Everything was right, everything was perfect. God and his goodness sharing, caring and seeing and knowing. It is very good, very good. And of course his desire, his expressed desire to return there to return to that right relationship to go through brokenness and folly and what, what, what should have been extinguished in the moment of sin in the time of the fall what was right and just and fair to do is to undo it all the transgression, the autonomy used to go against God's will to bring about something that God could not dwell with something that, 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 that in the understanding of the angel uh, Lucifer looked upon it and, and it drove him insane it drove him to, to him to rebel him to, to, to try and take by force the things that were not his in order that he might rule <coughs> moral insanity force them to do it don't expose yourself to the opportunity that that sin might come around and then in his fall from Lucifer to becoming Satan in the hardening in heart and mind that well I'll show you I'll make them fall and then you'll see that I was right and you were wrong that I should be in charge and you I don't know we don't know depart from here spirit of dark And it comes about that that's one of the things that I'm here to talk about today. As much as I might rebuke the devil, call for the Lord to rebuke the devil. Rebuke the devil in the name, power and blood of Jesus that I have the authority to do and bind him and muzzle him and cast him out and away from my life. The spirit of darkness, spirit of death, spirit of infirmity. There is a tendency for that still to return in our daily walk and daily way our connection to this cursed and corrupt world brings that inevit inevitable tainting and the ongoing need for us to be mindful of the things around us and the things within us that cause us to lose our alignment with God I have been preaching a giving messages on the series called the spiritual gymnasium and spoken about prayer and fasting and then I came to something a subject called deliverance and in that preaching there was opposition in my mind and in my life and even in the message that was given uh, spiritual opposition led to batteries losing charge and uh, the connections and the might you know, the, the, the sound uh, for the second part not quite right and difficulties and then again from that point another message delivered but still a stumbling block still something in myself and it's that which I brought today if I'm going to talk about deliverance I need also to re refer to a respected teacher's uh, criteria 
of, of, of the typical things that cause people who are not to be delivered and then in the steps of deliverance itself for the very simple reason that's about me too I am confessing a spirit today I am prayerful of deliverance of that spirit today I don't know if that spirit is something that's allowed and part of me and is part of my walk and way or it's part of something that needs to be set aside and I have a desperate need to, to be set aside from it I have a knowledge in my life a witness from the very earliest parts of my life now as I've spoken before post-traumatic stress disorder associated with a, a damage a brain damage received during a um, injury at the age of four and a half years old to five years old uh, quickly followed by the trauma of my parents separation although I wasn't aware of it on the greater things the underlying stress and difficulties that follow and also from that time memories of a supernatural ability to find out sexual things things like pornography I mean England didn't have pornography like much of the world had pornography at that time generally <clears throat> pornography was um, restricted legally bound and enforced to things like uh, magazines that were allowed that showed nudity but not actual sexual contact penetration um, uh, on unnatural acts or acts that were uh, groups and things like that yet yeah, there were stories that could still talk about those things and I had and have Jesus. Oh, God, it's a, a holiday here in China. So. However, in the name of Jesus, I come against every power, potentate, dominion that will come against me in this professing of a spiritual conflict and its overcoming. Amen. Of all the places near and far that this could be going on. Jesus, Jesus. Pack it in. Thank you, Jesus. I was out for breaking a train of thought. Supernatural ability to find out things. Pornography was limited, but not uh, um, and uh, not unheard of. There was. <coughs> and I feel sorry for 
I think well, certainly my father, who, who, who tried his very best to keep a clean and good life and uh, anything untoward separate from us. He, he uh, had custody of myself and my sister and he lived reasonably well the times that we were away were the times that he um, partied and those kind of things but we, we knew very little of that growing up some things not the worst of it by any means and in terms of that that's one of the things I witnessed to because this supernatural ability would always get found out so I can witness to one time if I'm having a magazine and one time if I'm having a movie a video when videos came out and were a thing when I was older that I discovered but nothing nothing else um, uh, yeah, so, uh, I, I thank God for that at, at times in a world that's f free from spiritual oversight that, that some degree of self-control exists and especially because I believe that the spirit that works in me works is generational and it caused him and actually to my maternal my mother's my grandfather my mother's father down that line I think this has come I don't know if it's to do or related to the Masons though it's likely and and also it's it's about discerning what is a natural male carnal desire sexuality however I profess this supernatural ability to find things my stepfather's supply of uh, magazines and things my grandfather on my mother's side even when my grandmother who again <coughs> living clean lives when my grandmother spent long periods of time in hospital and they were still probably younger than I am now again a rental video and I found, I found it to the point where he caught me he, he came up, he, they lived and worked in a pub public house, a big building and he caught me watching it and he's like it didn't take you long to find that and he'd hidden it behind a shelf of one of the, like a supernatural ability to locate these things and and the most witness I, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing this out the most witness I can give to it being manifest was a time about the age of 11 or 12 we were in high school high school was a, and is it can be a, you know a, a almost like a washing machine of humanity of youthful exuberance and endeavour in one way or another very chaotic again not a great uh, Christian oversight and yet how, how could that how is that broad I mean they had visiting it was a comprehensive school which is basically an open school a school a state school a school without uh, faith as its main uh, avenue of teaching its main oversight of teaching although our headmaster was a prof practicing professing Christian although there would be uh, messages brought from various churches as part of the assembly program the meeting of all the students program although we had a religious education uh, strand in our education which we learned about Christianity as well as Judaism and uh, Islam uh, Buddhism and those kind of things <coughs> the oversight wasn't there so it was a chaotic mishmash of youthful exuberance yeah. the um, pop song 
uh, by a band called Madness, Baggy Trousers, pretty much sums up, certainly as I got older, maybe 13 or 14, the chaos of, of British childhood in the early 1980s. And <clears throat> at the age of 12, 11 or 12, fairly early on, I remember experiencing in the morning a, a, a great excitement and <clears throat> it came to the break time what we call play time a break time in the morning and I came out of the school and I was trembling with excitement and it was because another student had brought in a book a forbidden book wasn't a pornography book in any way it, but it was I don't know if it was about occultism or sexuality I don't know what it was about but it was a book it contained black and white photographs there were certain things acts in it that I'd still say were disgusting a, a man uh, trying to have sex with an elephant a baby elephant that kind of thing no appeal but there was there was a uh, this is, this is that same spirit trying to get out now. Because it's linked to it is a, is a total rage. A total rage. And that's what's trying to manifest now. And will try and manifest in me. And is trying to manifest into me. I can feel it and I'm praying against it in the name of Jesus. And it, this, won't, this won't hold now. As much as I try, I have to pray in the name of Jesus to overcome it. Oh Lord, test you, love me. Yeah. I've been slow about this story. Father, I know it's here, I know this spiritual battle is real, I know that the things of the world are secondary to the things of the spiritual kingdom, and I pray against this, this coming against what I'm trying to do in the name of Jesus. I'm trying to explain it as a logical thing, and this, this picture, this, this story, this thing that was mentioned in there, was about a particular sexual act which has dominated my life which is uh, a desire for which has caused me difficulty in relationships and, um, and yet it was something that, uh, that uh, at that time it was like a, a, a door a permission that was open and i followed it and pursued it and enjoyed it reveled in it and by the age of about 30 I came to like an end of it and it passed. It was came to a point where I, I'd almost damaged myself and I reached an impasse and most of it passed away. But still involved in my sexual thinking. Something that was off. Something that continued something that continued and even into my te later teens 15 16 17 uh, was still present but were, it would surface occasionally and then go away and then later in life again uh, in relationships it caused difficulties and problems and I don't know whether to name it I don't know whether to name it at this moment in time because there's also a large part of my life where I've tried to justify it. I've even enjoyed it. It's not easy. <clears throat> it's 
So, so partly, you know, how can I preach on deliverance and talk about deliverance and, and, and be upright in the kingdom? If I'm not really upright in the kingdom, it's something that, 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 that causes me to be concerned. If I fear God and also I want to serve God, I can't serve two masters. I want to serve God. I have to surrender all. I do have in prayer do these things that in, in other times of my life. I have surrendered my sexual part, my sexuality. I've nailed it to the cross and given it to Jesus. I practice self-control. I don't, uh, I'm very thankful. I'm not drawn into uh, deep um, uh, uh, emotional wranglings over things like homosexuality, although I have been on the edge of those things as part of my walkway and life before Christ entered in I've been there it's not been something that I've wanted to explore or go further into it's something that I don't find appealing and in the same way things like uh, uh, pedophilia or zoophilia or any of those animals or children the same family members the same a, a non-desire to do it an ability to certainly you know when the, if those thoughts do present themselves like a temptation to say no that's not something I do it's not something I want not something I desire and um, I thank God for that I know there are people that struggle with those things and this is the the very center of temptation and sin this is about our natural estate and it's about those powers and potentates dominions that operate around us and in us and through us in order to bring us down and to cause disruption to the kingdom things that God wants to return to the world so I bring some notes today and the notes from a teacher who I rate highly in the uh, arenas of spiritual warfare and uh, uh, certainly interpretive language teaching. He was a Greek scholar uh, at Cambridge University, a, t a professor, teacher, uh, somebody who was delivered in his early, um, uh, not very early life, who had experienced the world, um, uh, was born in India, raised by Englishmen, uh, raised by, born in, but born in India, they experienced life uh, outside and the spiritual um, ground, the cultural ground that India represented and who uh, got into the British Army for the Second World War and was delivered and received Jesus as Lord and Saviour during that time and then became a minister and eventually moved into what became no as the charismatic movement uh, although he himself walked in a in a line that was you know included many different denominations and, uh, he preached deliverance and uh, deeper teachings on many subjects uh, uh, one of the things that I, I, I am thankful for in his witness and ministry is that if there were areas where it came down to non-scriptural understandings or beliefs so it's about uh, an opinion on something he would always highlight that opinion and one there are things that he believed in that I don't agree with I don't see scripturally so he believed for instance he professed in one of his messages that he believed in a pre-Adamic race so before Adam there was another race of human-like uh, people um, I don't follow that and he believed that was where the um, demons came from basically I, I believe that the demons are the uh, disembodied 
um, um, children of the Ananike, the, the spiritual beings, the angels that fell to earth, who had children, these what would be called demigods in other cultures, these powers and potentates that taught man how to fire clay and how to make steel and how to practice medicine, these uh, operate as spiritual beings, spiritual powers who crave bodies to inhabit in order to experience sensual pleasures uh, many of uh, that go against God's will and we see of course in the Gadarene in the story of the Gadarene demoniac who Jesus freed from many demons that those demons pleaded with him to go into the pig rather than uh, uh, to become embodied again they would rather live as pigs to have a bodily experience even though it was in animals than, than to be cast back to their, their uh, unbodied state and these are powers and potentates that we battle with and of course what they didn't what those spirits didn't know Jesus said you can do that but then the pigs ran down the hill and drowned themselves uh, <coughs> praise be to God so they were going to go back to that unbodied state Wow. Um, so De his name is Derek Prince. He's passed away in the early 2000s. His ministry and life deli um, delivered from, um, healed from, miraculously from cancer and a number of sicknesses, and then involved in a ministry spanning gener uh, 20 or 30 years. He produced many books and tapes. You can look online. Praise God, there are many recordings of his and. Uh, one of his big areas of his of his ministry was deliverance and spiritual warfare and it's to these notes that I'm going to make from uh, I'm going to refer to from his books and teachings so um, that's the one at deliverance itself specifically why some people are not delivered because one of the things that he preached and I believe to be true and profess to be true is that there could be people in the church people like you and me who are not delivered and there's a reasons for that. He listed uh, 10 reasons for that. Number one, a lack of repentance. <clears throat> As I said, even in my confession, this thing, I, I, I've, I have done it and enjoyed it. There's part of me now that's like, I, I don't want to give it up because I, I enjoy it. And yet, I have to pray for strength and conviction that, that what's stronger in me is my desire to serve God and be of the kingdom and not be tainted or be open to temptation and uh, sinfulness in this area that, that where I may draw or be drawn away from that a right alignment with God which may cause more harm than it does good which is so evident in so many lines of the church. But found the church of Carpe Crooks is its foundation is Jesus and yet the rocks that first line of stone which comes from the foundation also has to be right it has to be aligned and if it isn't then the rest of the building will be misaligned which again we see in so many churches today where it's just that little bit off and then ultimately you know the the, the the Anglican Church. I'll use as an example, founded because on 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 King Henry VIII's will and decision, he wanted to get divorced from his cat, Spanish Catholic wife, and he backed uh, the um, movement that became the Church of England and gave it stamp seal and authority, so they could give grant him his notification of divorce so it's founded on something that's not quite right and here we find ourselves five, five six uh, fifteen hundred however a thousand years later and it's and it's fallen apart why because that first although it's founded on jesus that next line of bricks that next that so important first line of stones uh, are, are out of line so if that foundation fails, the house fails. Let the devil in to, you know, in that wrong season, a church uh, I went to in New Zealand, part of a foundation of, of 
five churches throughout the city of Auckland based on uh, Ealing Pentecostal movement and yet its first one, its founding father, the guy who, who laid the foundation for this first church done so much work admitted that actually and not not as a confession of guilt but actually a, a, as a boast that, that, that they'd used uh, deception to gain the ground upon which the church was built the foundation is Christ that next layer the next layer of stones that rest on that foundation and, and it will come apart it will fail and, and that's where I am, that's, that's who I am, that's what I profess it, but as a call and, a, and, a, and what I'd hope to pass on to the next layer and the next layer and the next layer and the next layer that, that, that if a church is to be built that, 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 that genuinely is that church of Jesus that genuinely professes and practices the beauty and elegance and, and communion and conformity to alignment to God's will if that church can be found so that so that even in its ministers and ministry it doesn't fall into the many pitfalls that we see adultery and and and, and, and misappropriation of funds and all these things corruption that, that go through churches and it's Wesleyan or Lutheran or Adventists or Jehovah's Witness, it, wherever it is, it, it falls by the wayside because it doesn't truly align itself with God's word, and that's what we end up with. Its ultimate outpouring is then is that then churches, if all these churches corrupt, people will still look for a place to go, and Satan can build churches. Satan can corrupt the minds of people, and they can found churches in that in that like Seventh Day Adventist that are cult the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Mormons, the Shakers, that are, that are so off task, so off the path, yet people can't discern that because they're wrapped around a kernel of truth, Sabbath, witness, um, mission. And that becomes their righteousness in comparison to those other churches that are professing the word of God and professing that rightness of Anglican, Lutheran. There's no evidence of it because the spirit of God can't operate because they are so corrupt. Ultimately, they become same-sex marriage honoring homosexual um, ordained minister having women preaching in the uh, uh, congregations of the saints experiencing bodies that aren't although they pro pro profess to be aren't biblically aligned churches of the most high God with Christ as the head and the foundation and I, you know that, that's and that's what I want for the Church of Carpe Cruxes. That's what I want, my desire, my calling, my profession, my, my raison d'etre, my reason for being. And yet if there's still folly or failing in myself, I want to be expunged, I want to be cleansed of it, I want it to go. And I want it to go more than I want it to be in there. So my, my repentance, I, must, I, I hate the sin that I'm in and I must repent of it, I must turn from it, I must say to it, I'd rather not do that anymore. Praise be to God for cutting me off from relationship and yet there's still opportunities that, 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 that will do that wrong. Number two, so that's number one, reason people are not delivered, lack of repentance. Number two, lack of desperation. You know, passivity, an idea that, oh, well, life's going to continue anyway. There's no judgment to come, or it's not. It's going to be for such a long time, it's not going to really matter. You know, desperation is that, like, oh, Lord, I will be and I can be undone by this. If it is sin, if it is folly, if it is wrong, I will be undone by it. And in undoing the good works that I can do, and that I can't claim for justification but can only present even as filthy rags to you, they'll undone to too. 
lot of people meaning to do well but they're not really because their thoughts aren't truly aligned with God therefore they can't practice being aligned with God they can't recommend being aligned and all these things like like I used to be in the days before Christ that's where you'd recommend oh coexist and we can be a Buddhist and a Muslim and a, and a whatever you know there are many paths to God there's, the truth is there's many paths to the cross there's only one way to heaven Jesus says very clearly you know I am the way the truth and the life he says I am the shepherd I am the gatekeeper I am the gate the only way the only name by which we can be saved the only way to make that passage into heaven is by professing and calling and knowing that Jesus is Lord and in that turning away repenting of our sins and I'm desperate in that number three wrong motives people not delivered because they have wrong motives James 4 verse 3 is listed about this <coughs> Wouldn't this be a book I used to find it after Hebrews? <coughs> James four verse three. Or if you do, your requests are not granted because you pray from wrong motives. You spare to spend what you get on your pleasures. How fa you false, unfaithful creatures. Yeah. You know, so that's it. They have preached about reward culture. One of the wrong mindsets of Western, art, Western culture is reward culture. I do something good, I deserve a reward. And yet in Christian culture, I receive more than I deserve, so much more than I deserve in the moment I was saved. At the very beginning, God furnishes upon us forgiveness of sins and uh, salvation towards uh, redemption and that life in Christ forever. So how can I ask for more? Oh God, give me a, I just, uh, uh, you know, worked a charitable uh, cause for a week or two or a year or five years you know yeah I, I obviously deserve a big house or a car or a wife or you know all these different things and this is that wrong motives there are people that actually I, I can't claim it for myself but then people are oh. I, I, what I can claim what I can share is there are times when I'm like oh uh, I, I went to New Zealand thinking that was oh it's a payoff for, for going to South, living in Saudi Arabia and living in in India that there was some reward associated with my sacrifice and my challenges and trials that I'd faced and it, that that's not the case yes God can bless us yes He can provide in miraculous ways things that are more and above what we ask for even even what we don't ask for. But it's not associated with our, our works and not driven by that reward culture. We can ask for things, we can pray for things, that's okay, God can grant them, but it's not through this motive of, of, of reward for, for works. <coughs> if anything, you know, you'd, you'd be like, I, I'm aligned myself, you hear Moses requesting things because of that alignment because of that I'm serving you and I'm praying to you I ask for these things and if they don't come I'm not going to grumble or complain and if they do come I'll say thank you motives number four self-centeredness a desire for attention you know I want to build a church you want to become famous want to be the figurehead who walks around claim it, you know, oh, I've done this, I've done this great work, I, I pray and I hope not and it's nothing to do with that that, that, that it's hmm. number five, failure to break with the occult and again this is the mystic I've uh, shared recently, I did come under 
uh, come into knowledge of occultism. I have a, a knowledge of its working. I also uh, was, I believe, freed from it. The Holy Spirit said, set these things down. So I have a, an understanding of divination, the occult, the Kabbalah, uh, the, the, the horoscopes, the tarots, all these things. And I'm thankful to also have a, a time in my life where I set the teachings aside and the practice, even though it can be tempting to practice some of these things, to get what you want, to shape the world as you want it. You know, I, I, I desire a wife. I know how to achieve these things by occult means and my, that's a temptation for me and my profession, my prayer is to set that aside and say, no, I'm not going to do that. I leave this entirely in that, your hands, Lord, because you are the right one. There's only, if it comes by those right ways, if it comes by your hand, can it can a blessing be truly received and enjoyed for perpetuity. And the things of the earth are not worth the gain that they'd make for the loss that I'd make in the kingdom. It wouldn't work out, doesn't work out, don't do it. Uh, failure to sever evil or soulish relationships. So being in relationship with my wife, who was a member of a cult, who followed after that cult before following after Christ, uh, um, I couldn't remain in. How can two people walk together uh, who are not in agreement, the Bible says, and do not be unevenly yoked? It is very truthful and sad that it's true. We should endeavour in relationships that we are in, have gone into in those, in those terms, but there comes a time if we want to walk towards deliverance and be free from destruction, especially destructive relationships, maybe with somebody who's an alcoholic or an abuser, maybe with and, and our own relationships in that because we're responsible as, as um, uh, what's the word? Empathizers, no. There's a sense, say, of somebody who is a drug addict or an alcoholic, if they're in a relationship with somebody that that person is a provider, actually is one of the things that they use to locate upon in order to drive. So they're using that and we actually take our part in that, in that wrong relationship part of being somebody maybe uh, with, with one partner had through arguments so that person would get into an argument knowing that they could push those buttons yes well that's them manipulating you but I'm allowing to do that so we become part of a, of, of a broken relationship and a failure to sever and recognize those things is something that causes us to stay in those situations and not be able to move uh, number seven under a curse, being under a curse, and that's one of the things we pray, I, I pray about regularly. Uh, generational curses, witchcraft, there are people in the world today who operate in prayer, who, who specifically pray against Christians and even Christians in their community. There may be people you know in your community and society who pray against you in darkness, they live in darkness, and part of their life, part of their... profession is to pray against and pray prayers of, of, of damnation and death over people so those curses can be real it might be associated with uh, in, in my life uh, my mother was cursed by gypsies for not uh, uh, buying their wares one time when we were young and, and they openly cursed her and uh, I believe that was something I had to work on, maybe still work on that now, uh, to come out of. Um, failure to confess a specific sin. And this is where I'm convicted and concerned about what something that I desire and enjoy, whether it aligns with, whether it's sinful. Or not, and that's what I'm here to profess and confess and to work upon and pray against. If it affects my life, I'd rather it be removed because this is where uh, Jesus talks about 
if you have a hand that causes you to sin, strike it off, at least you'll have another hand. But it's better to get to heaven without a hand than it is to get to heaven, or not to get to heaven at all, not to be in that right relationship. And that's my concern, that's my fear. Uh, he says, to, if you have an eye that causes you to sin, it's better to have it removed, to pluck it out. And that's what I'm here to, to, to go and if it, it's related to sexual things I'd rather have my penis taken away as, you know, as long as I can still function th th to have that taken away than have it continually cause me difficulty in terms of my walk and way leading me to sin that ultimately I follow two masters and then when it get closer to that day, closer to that time, I will decide to follow the wrong one. I, I, you know, I, I cannot serve two masters and uh, I can't serve God and money, so I'd follow them and, and I don't want to do that. I, I, I want, I declare, I pray, I work towards, I ask for assistance, your assistance in prayer for deliverance. And then this is a message as well to the whole church. This is a practice that needs to become part of the church's identity. That, that, that self-reflection and prayer for deliverance that allows that continual cleansing operation so we prayerfully can move into a church society that, that doesn't fall into those pitfalls of corruption how an ordained minister can look upon the wife a vulnerable wife of a church member and then say oh i'm really we're really in love with each other and claim that as a relationship without saying, well, if we are, I mean, that thing can happen. But if it's the truth, then it will, that, that relationship, I will see you in five years. We will work towards extracting ourselves from our relationship and I'll see you. We'll withhold from our relationship because if it's true love, if it's the right love and the right way and it aligns with God's will, it will be established and in that time period it can be established fairly and as easily as possible without giving in to the very obvious thing which is just a sinful relationship however much we justify and build our lives around it if it is just sinful that is exactly what it is number nine separated by water baptism not separated by water to baptism so that final seal is the water is baptism in water according to So I, I really feel that same presence of pressure again. Batteries running out before the power's out and the battery replacement battery not having the power again. And so I'm gonna move through these things quickly and pray Lord for protection over this message for God, your, I believe it honors you. And I want to honor you. And I'm tired, so very tired of these things that come against you and cause these problems over and again. So um, not separated by water baptism, I've been water baptized, I claim that in the name of Jesus and the uh, blessing that comes with it and the changes, profess the changes that it did and witnessed to and uh, I'm mindful of uh, any backsliding on my part is something that causes me to fear and worry. And uh, number 10, part of a larger battle requiring corporate action, which may also be part and parcel of enmity of the church. So, uh, lack of repentance, lack of desperation, this is reasons why people aren't delivered. Wrong motive, self-centeredness, failure to break with the occult, failure to serve evil soulish relationships under a curse, failure to confess to specific sin, not separated by water baptism. So, of those, I really believe that I'm here today in the failure to confess a specific sin. And that relates around the uh, um, object of anal sex. And that's what I'm here to say, there's, uh, that's something that operates in my life as a desire. I don't see uh, scripturally that it's something that's wrong in terms of a man, woman, uh, 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 husband, wife, 
uh, relationship in terms of um, what the function of that part, body part is. I don't when 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 I've sought God on the matter, He said it's not His original intended function. But when I think about what He says, what He's talking about actually is the refuse part. Our orifices, our eyes, nose, ears are present, our uh, sexual organs are present in our reformed bodies. They're part of, we see the outer shell. I don't believe we're tubes, I think we're light inside in our heavenly bodies, the body that Christ uh, occupies now, we see the body that was seen on earth by 500 witnesses who uh, um, Thomas put his hands in the hole, the only scars that we have in heaven, that body that we will inherit has an anus so it's not part of God's original intention for it to be a refuse exit so um, what it's real intention for I, I, I don't know and yet I um, there I have a desire for this thing and if it is a sin then I would like to have it removed and also the spirit that drove me to it which was there in the beginning which gave me the supernatural ability I would like to be released from so then I go to the list say, list uh, um, David Prince put a list together for deliverance and that's what I'm going to do now um, um, be humble number one I pray Lord to be humble be honest I'm, I'm professing this and publishing this and before those people that know me and know me as a permanent record of my struggle and ongoing desire and journey to be pure confess faith in Christ the Lord Jesus is the Messiah the Christ he is who he says he is he is doing what work he has said he has done, he completed uh, uh, the work of salvation upon the cross. He paid the price for all sinners for all time who would turn and receive of him. John 3.16, um, God sent his only, son, only begotten son that whomsoever should believe in him should not perish but instead receive eternal life. Confess any known sin, number four, and generational sin. Well, as I said, there seems to be something that, that patterns my father's life, my grandfather's father's life on mother's side whether that comes as a generational curse or as a sin through generations or spirit demonic realm uh, connection or masonic or any other uh, witchcraft or connection I pray against that in the name of Jesus I pray for overcoming of that in the name of Jesus and uh, to repent of all sin via Proverbs 28 13 And the anger, the anger associated with it, this frustration associated in my life that leads me to this, this that's one of the things when that fell, when that just turned those pages, that I, I pray uh, against it and pray to surrender it. Conceal your faults and you will not prosper. Proverbs 28, 13, confess and give them up and you will find mercy. So I'm praying and looking for that mercy today in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus by whose stripes we are healed and uh, all other sin known and unknown the wrongness towards my or unforgiveness towards my fellow man and woman women and uh, rights and relationships uh, break number six break with the cult curses secret society so again speak against the uh, masonic uh, society uh, any other society seen and unseen cult witchcraft covens uh, any curses associated with those even in those in other religious or Orders and groups such as the uh, Jews, uh, Kabbalic Jews, and um, uh, Islamic uh, uh, mystics, uh, Sufis, all those things I pray a broken relationship with, they may be, be removed. And then, number seven, to, to forgive others, to forgive those who abused me, who caused me harm, who were angry towards me who uh, um, did things wrong, even these people setting off the fireworks today, to forgive them 
and to bless them in the name of Jesus and finally number eight to expel it. Ah! Ah! To let it go, to expel it from myself, to expel it from my life, to expel it from my being, to ask for an indwelling, a filling of the Holy Spirit, the Lord my God, to act in my life, to set me free from this demonic realm, this demonic influence, this demonic being, to stand against it in light and name, in Christ, in Jesus, to overcome in the name of 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 Jesus forever. Amen. Psalm 91 verses 1 to 4 You that live in the shelter of the Most High and lodge under the shadow of the Almighty, who say, The Lord, Yahweh, is my safe retreat, my God, the fastness in which I trust. He himself will snatch you away from the foulest snare or raging tempest. He will cover you with his pinions, and you shall find safety beneath his wings. Amen and glory, hallelujah. May you be blessed in your day way and walk. This day may you accept my apology uh, if in any way I have infected you with my wrongness if such as I am and I pray for a <clears throat> laying down and deliverance from the same for you I also hope and message to the church to seek deliverance, to seek truth. We must walk in truth. We must be renewed in the renewal of our minds to align ourselves with God's will. If it's in God's will, may we be blessed in it and may we uh, express that to others successfully. If it's outside of God's will, may we be successful. May we be contrite and may we be honest honest we be truthful with ourselves and with others that we may be set free in our partners and in our relationships seek right attitude that that right attitude may be shared and come together and that relationship that's formed be part of that that triangular diamond hard enemy of satan enemy of darkness, enemy of sickness, enemy of death and disease, hatred, unfairness, enemy of those things, that God may be glorified and his kingdom may come upon the earth, that his church may be built, his bride may be made clean and presented unsullied before him in her raffined raiment and jewels, that he may one day come for her in her time of crisis that will come in those end days that we may all see and celebrate in heaven forever the things of the kingdom for his glory and namesake Amen there are um, links online the uh, daily act of worship which is 211.org uh, carpecruxis.net is the church's website there are links on there to this preaching and also uh, other preaching and also preaching from those other preachers and teachers such as Derek Prince uh, you may also find them of course on YouTube and be blessed in your day walk week and way in the name of Jesus seek deliverance seek alignment seek his face uh, and let's see what 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 world we can live in together and what joys we can experience here as part of that kingdom <clears throat> Amen I find myself 
in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. I wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song can ever be. How marvelous. That's that view. How wonderful is my Saviour's love for me. He took my sins and my sorrows. He made them his very own. He bore my burden to Calvary and suffered and died alone. How marvellous, how wonderful and my song shall ever be. How marvellous, how wonderful is my Saviour's love for me. For me it was in the garden, he said, not my will but thine. <clears throat> he spared no thought for his own griefs, but sweat clots of blood for mine. How marvellous! How wonderful am my song shall ever be. How marvellous, how wonderful is my Saviour's love for me. When with the ransomed in glory, His face I at last shall see. It will be my joy through the ages to sing of his love for me. How marvellous, how wonderful and my song shall ever be. How marvellous, how wonderful is my Saviour's love for me. Amen. May you be blessed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.